Halt! Who goes there? What sort of disreputable individual prowls the streets at such an ungodly hour? Alright, so I haven't done a full review of probably the prettiest looking sword in my collection so far, just a first impression video a while ago, so we'll catch up to that today. As you can probably guess, there are substantial costs involved in running a channel like this, and ad revenue is a fraction of what it used to be, so regardless of what you think of sponsors, they really do a lot to keep things running and make sure you continue to see free videos. Sponsorships are few and far in between, so I always appreciate the ones I can get. But this video is sponsored by Gods and Glory, so if you remember the good old days of Heroes of Might and Magic, and who doesn't, and you're actually one of those people who play games on mobile, and you may want to give this one a try. It's got an open world where you can build your kingdom, develop your character, use diplomacy, form alliances with your friends. That's so all online with a large player base. And if you're interested, check it out through the link down below. If you download the game, through that you get some bonuses, like an Obsidian City, uh, 1,500 crystals, and a starter pack with XP boost and resources. I mean, you gotta grab all the help you can get as a filthy casual mobile player, am I right? Just kidding, of course. So this is the Town Guard by Arms and Armor. Swords like this were made for the Munich Town Guard, hence the name. Uh, the reproduction, uh, this particular reproduction is based on one from around 1610. And uh, so there's quite a number of them in museums, uh, generally from the late 16th and early 17th century. Uh, this is referred to often as a cut and thrust sword or a side sword, or sometimes it's also simply called a swept hilt sword. So if you look at this type of sword, it's basically right between a broadsword and a rapier. It's got the type of complex hilt that you see on many rapiers. It tapers quite a bit to the point, but it's not quite as long as a lot of later rapiers and doesn't have you know, the same kind of very narrow blade. In fact, it's extremely wide at the base and then tapers quite a lot. And as I said, this is a very nice looking sword, at least in my opinion. Uh, before you uh, impoverished peasants get too excited about it, it's rather expensive. I'm just messing with you, of course. Honestly, I wouldn't have bought it myself if this wasn't justifiable as a business expense for the channel. So I bought it for 1,220 US dollars at Call of Athena. That's quite a lot of cash to fork over, but you're getting quite a bit for it, since it's a very, accurate reproduction, high quality. Uh, I mean, I'll talk about all of that right now. So it's made of 6150 carbon steel, which has a carbon content of 0.48 to 0.53%. On the website, Arms & Armor says that they generally temper their blades to a Rockwell hardness of around 50, which is perfectly appropriate for a sword blade. And the hilts are generally cast of a softer tool steel. So obviously you don't need hardened steel for that. And when you look at the measurements, they are quite close to the original. Now, of course, there were a, a number of these uh, made for the town guard, so they wouldn't be all exactly identical. So uh, it's not going to be spot on exactly the same for each one, especially since the originals were hand forged, whereas this is made through stock removal. Uh, neither of which are inherently better or worse, by the way. Both method methods have pros and cons. Uh, some people seem to think that only hand-forged is the way to go, but there's nothing really wrong with stock removal. Uh, so the overall length of this one is 102 centimeters. Um, one, the one that I found measurements for, it's 99, so pretty close. The width of the blade at its widest is 4.5 centimeters. On one of the originals, it's 5.4. So uh, again, there's going to be some variation. Uh, the weight is 1.377 kilograms. On this, for the two originals that I found measurements for, it was uh, 1.41 and 1.445 kilograms. So it's just a bit over three pounds. You can also see some of them are you know, a bit wider or narrower in the blade. Some taper more strongly. Some taper to to pretty much a needle point. And uh, there's some minor variation in the, the hilt shape and all of that. But this is a very faithful reproduction, from what I can say. If you, if you look at 
the pictures of the originals, which are very well preserved, and this here, there's really no significant difference at all. Uh, there's also a hilt bluing option available, which I would highly, highly recommend. It doesn't cost that much. I mean, considering the total price of the sword to begin with. And uh, a lot of the originals, if not most, that I've seen uh, had that blued hilt. You can, in a lot of cases, you can still see the remains of the bluing. So I would definitely recommend that because it, it looks nice, it's authentic, and it helps prevent rust. So that's always a good thing. Personally, I really like the swept hilt, even though it's a bit of a pain in the butt to clean and maintain because you've got all these extra bars and rings and little nooks and crevices in which rust can accumulate, which is not that easy to clean and oil and all that. But it's very beautiful, it protects the hand quite nicely, and I very much appreciate the finish that they did on this one. It's it's a particular type of satin finish that looks almost like silver. It's quite a bit different than the blade, which also has a satin polish, but a higher polish, and then this, this really matte satin finish on the hilt looks just very nice in my opinion. It's also got this very attractive and well done twisted wire wrap here which is extremely tight. Uh, on some cheaper reproductions these tend to come loose and don't look anywhere near as neat as this but this wire wrap is perfect. There's really nothing else I can say about that. Uh, pommel is also nicely shaped. You've got pretty clear lines here and all that are even. It's a full tang of course, peened at the end here as you can see there. I also like the two decorative lines here and overall aesthetics are just right on. It's very appealing and I don't think you could do it much better than that. Uh, except with the the blued hilt it would look even better I think but this is just really nothing bad I can say about this. The finish is perfect. Well, there's just, of course, some wear on it from me using it. So it's, when it came, it, it looked more flawless than it is now, of course. No scratches or anything. But yeah, they, they really nailed it. Uh, the fit is also, well, I can't quite say perfect because there is a tiny bit of play in the hilt. No, I don't think I can really show that because you can't really hear it, there's, there's not really a click, and it's so minor, like when I move it you just see it it rotate in my hand, you can't really see it, like it's, I can just about barely feel it, but when I look at the, the opening here in the guard, it is very tight, so I can't really complain about that, so I, I just don't want to use the term perfect because I can see it or feel it rather starting to loosen up just a little bit. I haven't done any abusive testing with it because frankly it's too nice for that and also this is not the type of sword that you would try to split shields with or otherwise be extremely rough with. It is more of a finesse weapon and uh, yeah as I said the, the construction overall seems very well done. Uh, I'm very happy with the amount of stiffness that the blade has. This is quite a stiff blade, which is very much what you want for a, a blade that's supposed to be used for thrusting a lot. And this works quite well. I've, I've done a number of tests on a ballistic gel torso. The ballistic gel is pretty difficult to penetrate because it's very dry and there's a lot of friction. So you need quite a good, especially stiff blade to make that work. And yeah, this performed beautifully in that regard. So that all went well. As far as cutting is concerned, I did have to sharpen it some more to really do well for cutting tatami mats. I mean, you do need a pretty sharp blade for really clean tatami cuts, but uh, after sharpening, worked just fine. This is one of those cases where I personally would have liked it to come with a sharper edge, even though the way it was out of the box, I can't really criticize it too much. It wasn't bad. But uh, of course, sharpness is also a matter of personal opinion and you can debate how sharp it should be. In my opinion, something like a rapier or a side sword, especially if it's meant for use in uh, you know, unarmored civilian dueling, it should be very sharp, shaving sharp in my opinion, because otherwise you may have, ha may have a hard time cutting through sturdy fabric. Um, 
In, on the battlefield, on the other hand, you probably don't want a terribly fine edge because then you're dealing with armor. Uh, this is a military sword as opposed to a rapier, which is a dedicated civilian self-defense and dueling sword. When cutting with it, it really does feel like a cross between a broadsword and a rapier. It doesn't cut quite as well as some broadswords, but a lot better than a rapier. And you've got a lot of point control. Now, to me, it feels a little bit awkward to cut with a finger over the guard. You can do it, but uh, that's really more for point control and the thrust. But either way, you can definitely cut quite well with this. I managed to clean cut through a double tatami roll, so that's not bad at all. And yeah, it handles really nicely, very appropriate weight and balance. Now, don't think this is a light sword. It basically weighs as much as some long swords, but most of the mass is in the hilt. So you do f definitely feel the heft, but you can move the point fairly easily because of the balance. So that's about all I've got to say. I can't really find any true negatives here. I mean, I could point out the fact that the hilt has just about started to loosen up. I mean, it's so minor that normally I wouldn't even mention that, but this is a sword costing over $1,200, so I guess it is worth pointing out. The edge really is more personal preference. I don't think I can really criticize it for that, and otherwise, it's a lot of money to spend on it, and it doesn't come with a scabbard. So that's a downside, but you can't really fault it for that because of the quality that's there. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the review and found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Check out the links down below, and have a good one, folks. That all happens in a multiplayer environment with... In a multiplayer environment. <laughs> I couldn't have said that any more stiffly, could I? It's as stiff as this blade. Use diplomacy... Diplomacy? I got diplomas in speechcraft, clearly. <laughs> diplomacy... Kerfuffle. <laughs> Use kerfuffle. What is with me today? No coffee yet, that, that's what it is. Why do I keep making that mistake? I need, need to caffeinate before doing this, otherwise I'm semi-functional. Mm, shiny... Oh, don't mind me, I don't have ADD at all. This is the Town Guard by Arms and Armor. Thanks, Sirens. I appreciate you very much. Made for the Munich Town Guard, hence the name. And... Stuff. What was, what was my next point? This is the point. This is the the town that they did. That sounds like I had too much coffee already rather than none. Give me all your caffeines.